on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% L.A. Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, L.A. Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday. That's right, a Thursday, November 3rd. Welcome to November just in case you were wondering, 114 days until the LA Galaxy kick off against LAFC at the Rose Bowl. Not that anybody's counting. Not that not that everybody's looking forward to 2023. Not that we're not looking forward to Apple TV taking over. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I am. I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, I'm buying in. Apple fanboy. Taylor Swift fanboy. Very much in those two realms. Uh, we're going to talk about the LA Galaxy tonight. Going to get you updated a little bit on some LA Galaxy Team Awards. Talk about all those, including uh, First Team LA Galaxy 2 Academy. Uh, we're going to talk about Rose Bowl tickets a little bit here as well. We have MLS Best 11, which doesn't include any LA Galaxy players. There's a big surprise. Kevin Baxter wrote an article. We're going to talk about that because there's not going to be a show on Monday. Oh, spoiler alert. You, alert. you didn't even know that. Yet. No show on Monday. So we got a lot to get to. I'm sure we'll sprinkle in some other things as we get going to help me do all that. We're glad to have him back with uh, new facial hair. It's Eric, the Portuguese hammer beer. Eric, how's it going, buddy? It's going all right. It's good to be back. Again, the, the tracker is back. 114 days. Yeah, that's you it. Know, hope springs eternal. You know, all the exciting, exciting moves that are happening. I was a little bit confused about the show. Is this a end of season? I thought this was like a postmortem. We're tying a bow on it. Sure. But you're talking about it like we're we're looking forward. We're looking ahead. Sure. I don't yes. know. We're the in answer, this. Yes. We're in the in between right now. I don't. Uh, I don't know how else to like sort of put that. But that's that's where we are. We are we are somewhere in between where it the postseason starts or the off season starts, and like still like going over the the disappointment. I mean, we haven't even talked to you about the disappointment yeah. yet. LA Galaxy losing three two. Not that anybody needs reminded. <laughs> uh, but I like doing it anyway. So LA yeah. Galaxy losing three two uh, to LAFC. But by the way, I timed it. I think that was fourteen days ago that that's when that happened. Exactly. Fourteen days. Yeah, yeah fourteen days. So it's been two Thursday. weeks. It, it feels like a month and a half, two months. It's been 14 days. I just would like to point that out. feels ages ago. Yeah, and especially I think last time we talked, you were had a little guy just getting over, you know, whatever bug is going around. And my kids now have that. So it's traveled uh, halfway across the country. So, uh, you know, we got that to look forward to. But, yeah, uh, just my kind of wrapping up my thoughts on, on that exit. Again, uh, and I'm sure people uh, are tired of kind of hearing that uh, horse beat to death, but I just haven't been able to share my thoughts, I was bummed to miss the pre-show leading up to it. I had my streak going, and then unfortunately I was kind of out of town uh, that week. But it, to me, you, you kind of so, covered so, it too. So it was your fault is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I'll take the blame for it. Yeah, the, okay. the, 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 um, the intro, dramatic intro wasn't 100%. So, you know, that's on me, 100% on me. Um, but to me, it felt like, and I think you covered it a little bit with Sophie when you guys were on, it was like a bizarro El Trafico. It was in previous meetings, LAFC was in better form. And the question was, you know, are the are the wheels going to fall off of the Galaxy? And this time around, the Galaxy was flying high. Their midfield was humming. You know, they were coming off a shutout uh, against the MVP of the league. And so it just was like, it was, roles were reversed. <laughs> and so in previous meetings, Galaxy had to, out physical LAFC and kind of bully them and didn't let them get in their rhythm and kind of punch them in the mouth. And then we actually saw the opposite this time. We saw, you know, the LA Galaxy with the bulk of possession, LAFC being the team that kind of was out for blood and, you know, playing physical, goading Ricky into the headbutt and kind of, you know, <laughs> doing all, all the all, roughing up Chicharito and all that fun stuff. So it was just kind of everything <laughs> with an El Trafico leading up to it, it basically flipped it on its head. 
uh, you know, in previous games or late heroics from, you know, LA Galaxy players to score goals. And it was the opposite in injury time here. So, um, you know, it's just it was it was disappointing because of the rivals. And I think um, I, I mentioned on Twitter that I was happy to see the fight that they gave. You know, I thought that they they didn't give up. They, you know, didn't roll over. They kept, you know, clawing and trying to find a way back in with Grand Sur getting a crucial goal before the end of the half with Jovalich, you know, coming, coming on and getting that goal, just a huge goal. Uh, so I was kind of proud of the performance, but I, there are people kind of, you know, rumblings when you see it, it's like, well, are you okay with them losing? And it's not that you're okay with them losing. I think it's important to provide perspective. And that's why I was asking, is this like the season recap show or is this the, the next head? Because I think that's the important perspective. Cause when we look back uh, in early or I'm sorry, early August, late July, this team was dead. We were pronouncing them dead. They were going to miss the playoffs. We were questioning Vanny. The Klein out was in full form because we were, uh, you know, questioning roster configuration. This team was absolutely dead in the water. And then the additions of Pooj and Brugman swung the fortunes around. The team finally started to play like the team, like what Vanny was describing, even though we weren't seeing it. Right. Uh, and so FO kind of the front office fixed the short term. Um, so I'm looking at it from that perspective, you know, on, you know, August, what, what was that? What, one of those games that they lost, I think I have it here in my notes, August 6th, that lost SKC, mm-hmm. we're saying this team is, is done. And now to turn it around and have a 90 plus three goal in the Western conference semifinals, knock you out. That's not a bad turnaround. So I think from that perspective, that's, you know, if it was anybody else that they lost to, you could say, Hey, you know, given where they were and the progress that they made and that late surge at the end of the season, you're proud of how they performed than I am. I thought I thought the the way the players turned it on in that late stretch and the way they responded in a lot of these games and you know didn't let other teams kind of uh, you know dictate the game. They were dictating the game. I, I really liked what I saw from this last third of the season. But the stinger is it was against the rivals, and unfortunately, we're going to carry that mark that we can't beat them when it matters. Yes, and I think that's that's the thing that stings the most because we've had a lot of that leverage and that mental edge, and this is now two times. You can begin to develop a pattern. And it's like, ah, oh, that that's the part that stings and makes you upset. So I understand people being upset and not being, quote unquote, OK with a loss. But I think when you zoom out and look big picture, I think you have to be happy with the direction this LA Galaxy team was going and going into the offseason moves. How much of this stays together and you keep this momentum going and how much of it are you rebuilding and rehashing and trying to fill gaps? Are you filling gaps to make yourself better or are you going to lose pieces that right. were an integral part of it that now you need to replace and find a whole new chemistry, you know, a whole, a whole year from now. So, uh, bummed how it rolled out, you know, bummed it was against the rivals, but as a whole, you know, making, getting a home playoff game, yeah. winning a home playoff game, mm-hmm. and then, you know, taking, you know, a, a shield winner until the 90 minutes plus three, that's, that's not bad. The, the XG, I know we like to talk about XG wasn't great for the galaxy, but I thought they played better than what that showed. I think, the way they were possessing, they didn't get that final that push in the in the final third in those zones. That's kind of the hot the hot thing right now, zone fourteen or or whatever right. it is. Yeah, zone fourteen. Uh, <laughs> so they didn't get the the movement there. But I thought that they they dictated the game and they or not dictated the game, but they had a lot of possession. They had a lot of control. They weren't. It's, it's deceiving that zero point four xg. I thought you know we we see that in games where it looks like they maybe they should have done better, especially when you look at what Austin did. Austin ro- rolled into town and basically played dead for 90 minutes. That was one of the most embarrassing playoff performances I think I've ever seen in, in MLS. That, that was that was really Al- embarrassing. Almost as bad as MLS Cup where uh, Colorado and Dallas went to extra time. Oh, that was with, an ugly one. That was a really ugly goal. one. Yeah. yeah, That was in Toronto too, remember? Colorado and, Tor- and Dallas played in Toronto um, mm-hmm. when it, it was really cold. Uh, I went to a bar and watched that game. I, you know, it was a good choice to keep drinking. I think yeah. that was that was really what, how that one goes. Uh, extra time, by the way, extra yeah. time uh, own goal winner in that particular game. Everybody likes to point to the Toronto FC Seattle Sounders zero shots on goal. Greg Vanny certainly does. He never forgets. Um, but but as so, being a horrible MLS Cup, no. That everybody knows Colorado and Dallas was the worst MLS <laughs> Cup that has ever been played. So, I'm going to see how deep of a cut we can get. I want to say that the guy who scored against. The galaxy was the guy who had the own goal in the final. Could have been to eliminate that. That sounds right. And, you know, I don't know if anyone remembers. No, I don't remember at all. That well, but I, I remember no being happy that it was that guy that got the own goal because he's okay. the one who knocked. So that feels right. The vibes feel right. I, I mean, again, I, I think going back to some of your points, Western Conference finished fourth, and and maybe they had no business finishing fourth, except that 
Uh, if you remember, we had one Mr. Sasha Kleshin on this program, and he did a long extended interview, and I said something to the fact that you guys didn't make the playoffs last year. Uh, and he said, and I said, and you guys got cheated out of the playoffs because of a handball. And I never forget that. And he goes, you know, I always felt that where you finish is what you deserve. And perhaps Mr. Kleshin has had a little bit of influence on me to be like, you know, bottom line is he's right, is where you finish is what you deserve. Well, the LA Galaxy finished fourth. And yes, it was on tiebreakers. Yes, it could have one point either way. Could have been, it, But it doesn't or, matter because yeah. nobody else got that point. Nobody else had that tiebreaker. Nobody else was in the position to capture fourth the way that they were, except for the LA Galaxy. And um, for somebody who had been beating their chest that the Galaxy should be a top three team in the Western Conference, and I didn't think Austin would be up there, yeah. um, finishing fourth is real close to to being pretty good to where I thought it was. Now, a lot of I don't think you should trust me because I said that before. You know, Pooj and, and Bergman were there, and that's what made the difference. But at the same time, fourth means something. Uh, the home playoff game meant something. Uh, if you know, there's a lot of positive energy that's going that way. Yes. Rico's pizza is George John, a pox on George John. Oh yes. Forever. George yeah, so. John. Oh man. <laughs> that guy was a galaxy killer. Yeah. That was another one. That was like guys. Connor Casey with, with Colorado. Yeah. And just every time he would play, it was like, come, please don't just stay away from that man. Uh, uh good times. But, yeah. but to your point, kind of yeah. how it was, it was a different team, uh, you know, with you predicting top three, that's the thing that makes me nervous is. How, how well this team played in the final third. We don't know how much of this team is going to start the 2023 season. And so it's like you can't bank on, hey, we made a lot of good progress. Right. And that'll continue. Pick right up where you left off. One, there's the months in between where, you know, you're going to lose whatever chemistry you've built up. And then right. the roster moves are going to have an impact. So that's that's the part that makes me nervous. We're going to start seeing some of that too. November 7th, you'll start, I believe, is roster deadline day. And then the 14th, the next week, everything sort of kicks off. There's some a 24-hour trade window that's in there as well. So there's these little things that you can sort of look forward to that are going to start to shape that. We also have an article from from the Panda that's going to give us some insights into that. He was able to talk to Chris Klein and Greg Vanny. And I think that gives you some real insight. And I will even make some proclamations on some different things and perhaps add a little more shining light to, to what is happening. But the bottom line is that, and this got a lot of people really upset, is the core of the LA Galaxy is pretty much fairly well settled for next year. Um, and myth, that, that's good and bad. Um, yes. <laughs> and we can talk, and, and there's going to be a difference where we can sort of talk about it. But let's start here a little bit, just just with a, just, just to make sure everybody knows sort of where we're going. Opening day, right? That first kick, uh, February 25th of 2023 is only 114 days away. That's, I, I, I want to say that just so that way everybody understands how close everything is going to happen and how quickly everything is going to happen. I mean, you know, there's going to be a time in the very near future where, you know, we're going to have a preseason camp. Uh, again, and it's going to happen quickly, right? And right after the World Cup, things are really going to pick up. I mean, there is an MLS expansion draft before 2023, Ooh, right? right. And I there's mean, MLS I, expansion. And, yeah, yeah. And there's because St. Louis is coming in. Furious. Yeah. Don Garber was talking in the state of the league today about how I think St. Louis had 60,000 season ticket requests, right? That come on. I mean, well, the, their ones that has kind of surprised me. I guess the, their stadium is having issues as well, right? There was. It, it again, might. That may be temporary, but but yeah. but the thing um, the, why I bring this up is Charlotte was a team when they came into the league. I thought, oh, this this team's going to struggle. You know, I don't know if there's a big fan base, a big need for soccer, and or a want for soccer in Charlotte. And they they packed that house pretty well, and they supported that team. They seemed to get into it. So if St. Louis kind of follows that Charlotte model, maybe it's not going to be. St. You know, St. Louis you is know. a soccer city. I know yeah. it, it, it has a history of being a soccer city. So. It's not going to be a problem. Don Garber actually made the argument today and said something of where it's, he said there's not a city in the United States. And I'm sure this is hyperbole, but at the same time, take it for what it is, because you couldn't always say this. There's not a city in the United States that isn't capable of supporting professional soccer. And that's a fair statement. Right? I don't think he's wrong. Right. I mean, yeah. you could go low, low. That doesn't mean everything's first division. But well, whenever you look at sort of where you're at, you could find ways for a USL championship, a USL League One, USL League Two, right? Those different ones. You could and NISL. I mean, there's different levels of professional soccer. But, you know, I think before people would say that you would never go down to San Diego, right? Because San Diego, they, they don't pay attention yeah, to their sports teams. Town, yeah. yeah, it's a beach. <laughs> they got too many things to do, right? And everybody now, I think, is firmly supplanted in the fact that San Diego is going to get an MLS team. And yeah. Don Garber alluded to that today. So there's things that have been happening. And I, I'm paying attention to the chat room as well. 
Uh, Mr. Provino, Matt, Matt dropped in and said, you know, it's 2,887 days since the Galaxy last won an MLS Cup. I have 2,888 on my calendar. We're one day off. I don't, yeah, but you know. still. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're Which, a, a very, very long time, 2014. And somebody said, you know, E-Super was correct in saying the Klein era. I mean, that yeah. is Chris Klein's era right there. Mm-hmm. It's 2,887 days or 888, depending on which one you're going with, um, you know, since the Galaxy last won an MLS Cup. And it's always always interesting to hear people talk about this. I also saw in the chat room down here, nobody fears us anymore. And that's not true because that changed in the second, in the, the last yeah. third of the season. LAFC was scared to death of the LA Galaxy. And they were you could, shaking in their boots. They, they were. were. And, yeah. and, and Austin was worried about the LA Galaxy. Yeah. And anybody who was in the playoffs was worried about the LA Galaxy. Now, I'm not saying that that carries very much weight right now because you have to back it up for next year, right? Yeah. If, you, if you start flat next year, you're not, nobody's going to fear you again. But if the LA Galaxy are able to pick up on the momentum that they started or ended this season with, if they're able to start with that, if they're able to go into uh, the Rose Bowl game, right? So again, tickets are on sale right now. Um, Tickets ranging uh, from what I saw um, on this all the way from $35 all the way up to $500. So there's a wide range of tickets that you could get to go to this, this game. You know I hate the Rose Bowl, Eric, and I've said that many times. I am excited for this game, however. Um, I think this is a really cool sort of thing and it's better. The only thing I would say when you're picking tickets, it says on your ticket where you're selecting it, it says LA Galaxy Zone or LAFC Zone. So make sure if you're a Galaxy fan, you're picking LA Galaxy Zone, right? And you're not putting yourself in an LAFC Zone. Okay. There's, there's not a ton of tickets left for it. There's, there's a bunch. There's not a ton, but if you go into sections, it's not like the sections have, you know, They're maybe yeah. yeah, maybe three or four rows are open in the whole section, but there's lots of those spread throughout the stadium. So you it's will have yeah, you can get your 90,000, 100,000 yes. people. So th- th- that's something that I'm curious to see how how that eventually is going to fill out, because uh, I thought it, it is going to come down uh, to ticket pricing. And shout out to Mike, Mike Gray, who's in the chat. I think he he posted something similar. I know about the pricing being the thing that's going to make or break it. And I think that that's that's very true that depending on what that price point is, it's a very cool idea, a novel concept, but if you price people out, then that's going to become an issue because it's not, um, you know, it's not SoFi Stadium. It's not the state-of-the-art new shiny toy. It's still the Rose Bowl, so it's, I don't know that it's as much of a draw, but it is this kind of dream scenario that we've been wanting, which, how, let's get this in a big stadium yep. and get as many people as possible. So I am curious to see how it's going to pan out. And, you know, you mentioned 114 days from now. I, I Googled it <laughs> while we we're doing 114 days ago was July 12th. So yes. think about it, July 12th, not that long ago. No. Now remember the galaxy's slumping time that we, we weren't that far ago. So, so, you know, July 12th, you know, February uh, 25th, there were the same distance. We're in that middle zone right now. So again, it's crazy how, how quick things are going to pick up. Like you said, the world Cup's going to come and go, and then we're going to start seeing, you know, people reporting for camps and, you know, uh, winter transfer window uh, action is going to start happening. That's going to be a crazy window uh, this go around. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be crazy times and it's going to come fast and furious. So shout out to people who got the tickets. I think it is going to it's going to be a cool, cool experience no matter what, how it fills out, because I just think just for the scenario and opening the season. The right. Apple TV, I think, is going to, you know, they keep pushing that when you when they show the state of the league and the. You know, all the MLS Cup events that are popping up, there's that little Apple logo everywhere. They have those things. So you know that whether that's Apple's doing or MLS is doing, they're going to pump resources behind this to make it a thing. You know, we're talking about you know, making Fetch happen. Like they're going to yes. try to make this a big event, a big deal as their opening splash, uh, you know, being the, the rights provider. So I think that's going to be even if you're not able to get into the Rose Bowl, you're going to see a cool experience for that opening game. All right, let's get to some super chats before we go into There's LA a whole Galaxy. Bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, I know. Missed, they've been stacking up. I didn't miss. They've been oh, well, stacking. Yeah, of course. Been stacking. That's fair. Sorry, uh, sir. Jacob gave us a ten dollars super chat. Thank you for that, Jacob. Uh love the love the name as well. Uh that's my son's name. So uh also my middle name. Also my grandfather's middle name. There you go. Now you know the entire history of the Guessmans and Jacob. Uh Jacob says the other day I had flashbacks to how much I used to like Stefan uh Stefan Ishizaki, but I couldn't remember if I liked him because he was actually good or or if it was just his facial hair thoughts and obviously the facial hair argument uh, or yeah. discussion brought up by your facial hair there, Eric, and the handlebar, yeah. uh, the, the next, uh, the next season of, uh, darn it. I was going to try to remember the name whenever I did it. What's the cop one. 
And why can't oh, I remember Reno nine one one? No, not Reno nine one one. What's the Yellow Super, Super Troopers? Super Troopers. That's what I'm go. thinking. Same so the, vibe. The, Reno the, the next movie, yeah. yeah, yeah. The next movie is Super Troopers. Uh, <laughs> you're you're right in there for that. Uh, okay. So he says, you know, was was it his facial hair? By the way, Shizaki, very nice facial hair. Uh, but I will tell you, Jacob, it was his play. A solid, solid winger made a difference when he needed to, was always in the right position, um, wasn't super flashy, had enough speed to sort of make himself a, a, a dangerous player. I'm a big Stefan Ishizaki fan for sure. Yeah, I think you nailed it right there. I, I'm thinking of someone like this past season, like a Douglas Costa, who the potential and the flashes of brilliance, there were a higher ceiling there, but the, the drop-off of consistency of play was way low as well. There was a huge dip. When Douglas Costa was off, we can point to that playoff game, that yep. last playoff game. When he was off, he was off. Ishizaki never gave you those low lows. You know, no. maybe he didn't, you know, have the sizzle, you know, elasticos going around defenders. He didn't have that part, but he was just solid, Such sending those crosses in, right. and getting his job done. Like he, he was a, a great player for that era such, of the Galaxy. With such a Bruce facial. signing. Yeah, such a Bruce signing. That is <laughs> such a Bruce signing. No high, not the high high, but not the low low. Bruce yeah. was all about give me an eight all day long. I don't need a ten. I don't want a five. I want an eight. I want a seven and a half and an eight every single game. And your low better be a seven and your high is can, a, sure. whatever you want it to be. But low is a seven. And I don't want to ever see it below that. Yeah. And, and I mean this as respectfully as possible. Like you don't look at Stefan Ishizaki and think, wow, what a what an MLS legend. What a great of the game. You know, what a career. But for the, his role and for his purpose, he fit it perfectly and he serviced did. the Galaxy, uh, you know, in, in an excellent way. And had great facial. He had a good look. He had a he great did. look to him. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I, again, I really, I'm a big fan of Stefan Ishizaki. He big, big guy. Um, Mike Gray uh, gave us a $2 super chat. Says, I'm exhausted. Also love the hammer stash. So there you go. Very easy. Uh, we can do that. Uh, and then uh, John, uh, our exile in Colorado there, uh, John gave us a $5 super chat. Said, would you rather Rose Bowl parking or 2022 MLS Cup parking? Uh, well, they're parking at Dodger Stadium, I would like to point out. That is where the drop-off point, if you are going to MLS Cup in the heart of the city there, you get to stop. You six I By the way, Somebody in the Discord, and, uh, and I think it was Brendan, SA Galaxy in our Discord, was like, isn't Dodger Stadium really far away and yeah. from, from, from the heart <laughs> of the city? And I'm like, oh, my God, it's got to be like, what, 20 miles? It's six miles away. But we all know in L.A. traffic, that six miles is like a 40 or 50 and, minute bus ride, right? And, and that particular six miles, I think that's <sighs> the thing. When the solution to your traffic problem is getting in and out of Chavez Ravine, it's, you, you have you have a problem because getting in and out of Dodger Stadium is, is a is nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. You know, they have, they have they have a huge lot, and that's part of you know, uh, you know, their real estate issue, you know, things that they have going on, and it's an advantage to the Dodgers. But getting in and out of there, it's not a fun time. No, getting in and out of there, and and to the. The point as someone who's had USC season tickets, my brother who's a USC alum, getting in and out of the Coliseum is not a fun time either no. when that Coliseum is packed, especially back in the national championship run days. So with a USC homecoming game, uh, while USC is kind of in a top 10 program, with MLS Cup coupled with that, it's just crazy time. It's going to be crazy time. And the, I at least appreciate the fact that they said, hey, there's no there's no parking. You just don't, don't even do it. Don't come here looking yeah, for parking. Yeah, because I know they um, – USC VIP parking, they use the Bank of California a lot, and that's already booked, that's paid for, that's done. So, you know, tough luck, uh, you know, find other ways around there. And so that's, 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 I think, just the fact that there's no parking, having to take the metro in and out of there, you know, when they built that new metro line into the, the Expo Exposition right. Park. I, you know, we tried it out and we're like, hey, you know, why not, you know, park, park at one of these local stations and train in. It was kind of a miserable experience getting out because you can go early and avoid crowds. Right. But when you get out, everyone's getting out at the same time. And yeah. unless you want to hang out, you know, in downtown L.A. for, you know, four or five hours, the, the trains eventually do stop. So, you, you know, you do have to get on one. It's it's kind of a miserable experience. So as much as I hate the Rose Bowl and that, you know, golf course situation, because right. they, they file you in very nicely, plenty of staff. Nice orderly fashion, but getting out, it's just a free for all. Good luck getting out of there. Basically, you, do, becomes you don't mo move. Yeah. Becomes there, monster jam in there. Uh, so, uh, but I'd rather have that than, uh, than whatever's happening. Uh, Exposition Park near, near the Coliseum there. That That's going to be a mess this weekend. At, at least at the Rose Bowl, you end up tailgating on a golf course. I mean, yeah. in top, top tailgating spot. Yeah. <laughs> it, the, uh, you know, the Rose Bowl is possibly one of the best tailgating spots in all of the United States, maybe in the world, for being able to tailgate on a golf course 
and chilling. And that's I always enjoyed it when Arizona yeah. State would play uh, UCLA. I'd always go for that. So that's great. The problem is, you're right, getting out. I will tell you why I don't care about that is because I'm part of the press and it takes me forever to get out of there. And you're, we just hang out. We just hang out going, in the press box. You're Everybody's coming like, out two hours later yeah. anyway. I, th- I yeah. think I actually, when I saw USA play Mexico for the Confederation Cups playoff, I think because of that congestion, we just ended up hanging out uh, outside and we actually walked when we were walking back we were ran into Stu Holden walking back at the same time so I, I kind of see your logic at, at oh, coming a little Stu. bit Stu's so, over there just old Stu. just just getting ready to talk about Qatar and how great that is oh that's <laughs> well, and, gonna be and speaking yes. of that's mm-hmm. my first memory of the Rose Bowl was uh-huh. 1994 USA versus Romania okay going to the Rose Bowl and that atmosphere like when you're a young child and seeing that that that's one of the reasons that got me hooked uh, into the game was that was that game yeah. uh, at the Rose Bowl. So a lot of history there and all the more reason to kind of visit that opening game and, and all the history and the fun that belongs to it. MLS Cup for the rivals. Nah, give them candies. Let it go. But I should tell everybody, this is a fairly open show in terms of what we have to talk about. There's nothing like <laughs> set in stone that we That's absolutely... the beauty of the offseason, yeah. I have a whole list of things. I'm not going to say we don't have stuff. We do. We have a whole list of things to talk about. If I don't get to any of those, I'm not going to be overly disappointed. There's like one thing I think we have to talk about. Other than that, I don't care. So if you have questions and you want to super chat them, go ahead and do that, and we will be here to uh, to take those. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the LA Galaxy Team Awards. Let's talk about how Josh got it wrong on Defender of the Year. But that's okay, because I think the voters got it wrong on Defender of the Year. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, let's go. Um, Moving on. Yeah, get to that. <laughs> yeah, LA Galaxy Player of the Year was Javier Chicharito Hernandez. We talked about that. That was fairly well known. I think that was the, the right no answer. Right? Okay. Yeah. There, LA Gal- there was some rumblings for Ricky and then rumblings for Jovovic, but I think... You can't. You're, you got to give can't. it to your top it's, goal scorer with the most minutes. It's a no brainer. It's it was it was it was uh, it was Chicharito. That that's fine. Uh, that's the second year in a row winning it. Just in case you're paying attention, uh, defender of the year was Jonathan Bond. I would love to see how many first place votes he got because Ooh. it is ranked voting. We do use ranked voting, right? So it's first place gets certain number of points, second place gets certain number of points, third place gets certain number of points. I have to imagine. I know he was, I think he was third on my list, right? Whenever I went down, if I remember correctly, he might, I think he was third. It was Sega Koulibaly, okay. Julian Rajo, and then uh, I think, uh, if I'm correct, Jonathan Bond. So he was third. But like that third was, and I, a point. I really like Jonathan Bond. I don't want to pretend like I don't. But that third was more of like, who else am I going to put in there? I yeah. guess it's Jonathan Bond. Because in my opinion, he had a very up and down year, a lot like Julian Rajo. And I didn't want Julian Rajo to be Defender of the Year either, although there were lots of people who were saying he's absolutely Defender of the Year. And I thought Sega Koulibaly was by far the most consistent performer at defense. So, Sega, you got screwed. I don't know what to tell you. Um, it is, wasn't my fault. I just want to tell you. This is where, one of those things that if were, we were really good at this podcasting thing, I would have come in with a rehearsed counter-argument on why Jonathan Bond is the defender of the year, right. but we're in the hive mind here. I agree with you. Sega Koulibaly was the most consistent through, through 34 games. Uh, didn't make a lot of mistakes, missed a little bit of time due to injury. But, you know, the thing, the funny thing about Sega is when he's on the ball, every game he does one or two moves where like, he's going to lose it. It's going to fall apart. Mm-hmm. And he manages to juke a, a forward and, and make it work and make that great pass. I thought he was very solid this season. And I think what Sega suffers from is, uh, a bad agent, bad press manager. He doesn't have that, you know, aura of <laughs> same, you know, good vibes that, that Jonathan Bond gives out. Jonathan Bond, you know, likable guy. Right. People love cheering for him, you know. Right. And it's one of those things. And again, we're not, <laughs> of course, we're couching this. It's to no disrespect of his own, but Sega, Sega was a better defender over the course of 34 games. You know, Jonathan Bond had some mistakes there were some games where he kept the gal absolutely kept the galaxy in games yes but i think last season he had a better season you know where he basically saved the galaxy from losing a lot more games than they could have where in this season it's you know he, the galaxy ended up winning because of a goal surplus but it wasn't for jonathan bond necessarily keeping them in games and so i think that's kind of the difference of where i had jonathan bond not at the top of my list so sega okay. i'm with you i think sega was the most consistent best defender of the year, but I also would have been totally okay with Julian Araujo getting it. I could I could his, understand that because argument because of his offensive contributions. Yes, that's something that I I like to I, I count that as being part of the defender of the year because right now and the way the game is played, you know your fullbacks have to be part of the offense. That's just the way it is now. So if you're able to defend and contribute on the offense, I think you get you get a gold star for that. And for I would not have been upset if Julian Araujo and I was actually expecting him to get it. 
even though I felt like Sega was the best player. So I was I was surprised to see that Jonathan Bond got Defender of the Year. Larry, I think it maybe as a makeup call for last year. Last year he could have won the award. Larry Morgan not on Twitter uh, was uh, texting me immediately because he said Jonathan Bond was Defender of the Year whenever he texted me. Larry. And, and so Larry was like, "Don't ever, don't ever doubt me. Don't ever doubt me." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you were still wrong." By the way, I just let you know. Uh, Golden Boot Chicharito as well. Uh, Chicharito also was the Humanitarian of the Year. Um, L.A. Galaxy two Preston Judd. I mean, and that was that was pretty easy. By the way, the Defender number. Defender of the Year Jalen Neal. I, I, we didn't vote on these. These are basically I don't know who votes on them. So I don't think that they actually vote. I think they're sort of applied by the team, and they're saying this is who it was. Yeah, for, for G two that would make more yeah. Sense. Um, Golden Boot. Preston Judd, uh, humanitarian of the year for G2, Jalen Neal. So you got Jalen Neal getting two awards. You have Preston Judd getting two awards. And by the way, those are the two guys that if you're looking at guys who could make an impact for 2023, those in my mind are the two most likely candidates for yeah. the 2023 season. So that's one of those things when you're looking to fill gaps. I think I was thinking if Chicharito did move on and we'll talk about rumors and Suarez happened to come in, I was thinking, well, if you have Suarez, you have Jovalich, and then Judd has kind of showed that he's, you know, he has that that knack, you know, you bring him along and maybe he becomes your your new Jovalich off the bench uh, to make the magic happen towards the end. So I, th I feel like Judd is right on that precipice there. And then the same thing with Neil with some of uh, <laughs> here we are not speaking kindly uh, of defenders. I think there are some defenders on this team, you know, Eric Zavaleta, Nick Depew, who maybe I, I don't I don't see a spot for them. So maybe right. now is when you give Jalen Neal that chance, Marcus Fracranis that chance give them some minutes and bring them along. So I think you could see them. Another guy who, who comes to mind and he wasn't on this list, Cameron Dunbar had, a, had I know he, he was on highlight reels all the, all over the season for, for G2. So I'd like to see him, you know, when his time, I believe it was 2020 when GBS gave him some time and he came in and he really, he showed a lot of promise. So I'd like to see him get another, get another shot at getting in this first team playing on the wing or maybe playing up front. Uh, in different situations. Cameron Dunbar is another name that I'd add to that list, yeah. along with Judd, Neil, and Fracranis. Yeah, it could be, and and maybe there'll be some other surprises. I mean, I think you also can look in the middle of the roster and maybe look at somebody like Daniel Geary getting more minutes, right? You yeah. know, those types of things. Uh, maybe Carlos Harvey gets some more appearances in those. Maybe you look at um, Adam Saldana in the midfield as well. The midfield is thinner than I think Greg Vanny would like. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in and finds another veteran to sort of put that in, but that also depends on what Victor Vasquez and Sasha Kleshin do and those types of things. Um, it's one of those, the, the starting, the, your starters are solid, but the drop off is, is, is pretty steep. It, it, it is. Um, yeah. LA Galaxy Academy, uh, Brandon Tellez, Tellez, uh, midfielder. Um, he's 17, made his professional debut for LA Galaxy 2 this season. He logged two appearances during that in the USL re uh, regular season. Um, so, uh, he was also called up by the U18 Mexican national team for a training camp. So if you're looking at, you know, again, just sort of keep your eyes down the list a little bit there. Um, you can you can figure out who is coming uh, and when they are coming. Just to give you the list of everybody, it still hasn't happened, and I'm waiting for it to happen. It's going to happen one of these years, Eric. It's coming. The defender of the year is also going to win the player <laughs> of the year, right? Uh, it was supposed to happen in 2016, okay? The Galaxy panicked. And they took the vote away from the press and they made it a popular vote for Giovanni Dos Santos. That way he could win. And they did it on Twitter and they took it away from it because they knew Yella Van Dam was going to win player of the year and defender of the year at the same time. And their big marquee signing, Giovanni Dos Santos, will get no awards. And so they, I mean, totally well, he won golden boot. Yeah, I mean, he would have. That season. Yeah, okay, right. great. According to that chart, but great. Uh, Great. But I'm with you. Yellow Van Dam burned so bright that season. Oh. There, there was a, I think Galaxy History posted it, that the goal where he, he, he megged the Colorado defender before sending in the cross to a Giovanni Dos Santos, mm -hmm. you know, header goal. And I think that season he was so solid on defense and just a, a beast and everything you wanted from a leader on that back line. So I'm with you. He, he would have been a great MVP for that season. But then speaking of the drop off, his drop off. <laughs> The season after that was was it was a pretty steep decline, and I know he had other. There were other factors led into that, but that 2016 season, he was absolutely right a, an all star and a beast for the LA Galaxy. Yeah, he was, and he and he would have. And I'm telling you right now because I had the pulse of the press box that that particular year in 2016. Well, I knew it was going to happen, and then they changed the vote because they knew it was going to happen yeah. too. Talk about a guy with good press. Everyone loved Yella. You know, the way everyone was all about him. At so. that point, he was yeah. he was the team, right? And that was yeah. a that was not a good that was not a good team. Um, and so, twenty sixteen wasn't. 
it hodge. wasn't a horrible team. I yeah. agree. It wasn't it was a, a horrible hodgepodge team. Of, yes. of pieces put together. Yeah. But that's what you that's what you expect. You were like, yeah. it's Yellow Van Damme. He's clearly yeah. the best. He's clearly the captain, which he was made captain, if you remember, in 2017. 2017, the wheels fall off. Okay. Yeah. I remember I had lunch. Uh, I had lunch with Yellow Van Damme uh in 2017 with i think larry morgan was there and we were hanging out and we had lunch with it was one of the things the galaxy did they invited us to come and sit down with different players that to have lunch and yellow was sat there and he talked to us he was great great i mean great guy but 2017 yeah. all went down uh downhill <laughs> well, if you remember he had he had family issues right he was yeah. he was like having problems with his family it was like a divorce thing and the whole deal it was not a pretty situation and, and being out of the country away from your family like he, that's that's rough he quit on the team if you remember there were a couple red cards where you're like what happened to Yella? Yeah. oh okay he just wanted to leave that team okay sounds good so yeah really interesting uh sort of looking back at the history of everything if if we continue with awards in this case we should talk about the mls best 11 and we'll do it very quickly because there are no la galaxy players on this do you think I, i'll just say carlos bella brandon vasquez uh jesus ferrera uh daniel gazdag uh hani mukhtar who was the league mvp uh sebastian Giussi, uh luciano costa uh let's see kai wagner jacob glesnes and walker zimmerman and andre blake in gold those your, that's your best 11 is there an argument can you make an argument for chicharito to be placed on this particular list yes 100 okay. percent. How, how, how how do you do it you replace carlos ella you, you know, more more goals, uh-huh. uh, Not- more valuable to their team. And if mm-hmm. you're building a best eleven, I think Chicharito was absolutely robbed of a spot up here. I think it's going to come across as sour grapes and as a hater because we're an LA Galaxy podcast. Mm-hmm. But uh, speaking to some people who are I know are fans of LAFC, they they also agree that Vela had no business being in this this top of best eleven. They even they thought Chicho Arango. To, should have taken that spot. And so I think you have a better argument having Arango up there, Arango versus Chicharito. Okay, who's more important to them? Arango. I think that's a, yeah. that's, a, that's a better conversation than yeah. Vela. And I think Vela being on there is a travesty and it shows kind of some of the biases of some of the voting. And, and I, I didn't get a vote things, in this. I would like but to be very as, clear. I will say that as someone, even though we are an LA Galaxy podcast, mm-hmm. uh, we're, I feel like we're pretty tapped in in like noticing games and following teams. And, and so when you look at this list, there's no... There's no Nothing that jumps out in here that you say, oh, wow, that's way off. You know, Brandon Vasquez just had an absolute banger of a season. Has his Ferrer to what he did in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Mukhtar, obviously MVP. Drewsy, what Austin did. Uh, you know, and then obviously the Philadelphia, you know, basically, you know, defense and, and Gazdag is what he did there. There's no no issues with this team except for that 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 inclusion of Vela. You could tell, uh, yeah, th- he just has no place. He's completely off. off uh, you shouldn't be on that list. I, I want to see Chicharito there. I feel like if you're building like a well-rounded, you know, you want you want more representatives, Chicharito should be on the list. But you could even, I, I'll, I'll concede and say Chicho Arango, if he took that spot, I wouldn't be as upset. I, I will say this. Carlos Vela had more goal contributions than Chicharito did. I think Chicharito had 18 goals, uh, two assists, which gives him total 20 total uh, goal contributions. Carlos Vela had, hold on, I just pulled it up. Uh, Carlos Vela had... Uh, 12 goals and 11 assists. That's 23 goal com- contributions. There's an argument there. All right. Yeah. I'm not saying I listen. <laughs> I I mean, that's why I'm not going to sit here and argue. I think you're right. I think Arango is probably the guy who, who could be up there. I also think that I think Philadelphia is a really fun team. I really do. I and, and this is coming from somebody who said they absolutely didn't believe didn't deserve to be where they were like the last couple of years. But seeing them play this year, they have been one of the most dominant teams in all of Major League Soccer. They're actually I think in a lot of ways they are an underdog going in to play LAFC, but at the same time they're not uh, because I think Philly is probably the well, best team this year or certainly has had the most dominant form of any team this year. And, and speaking of tiebreakers, you know, talk about a team that, you know, was hard done by a tiebreaker. They feel like they were, they had the same amount of points as LAFC and it was a tiebreaker that gave LAFC the shield. So they have that extra little edge, that chip on their shoulder that they're going in with. And I, and I said it with, you know, having friends who are tapped in to LAFC, not thinking Vela should have been up there. They were they they were more afraid of playing Philadelphia than they were of NYC. They were hoping NYC would win that game, and they feel like they'd have an easier time. Philadelphia, they don't feel like that's going to be as easy as a game. And I agree. I think Philadelphia is going to give them a, a tougher tougher resistance than maybe NYC would. 
I feel like Philadelphia is the more experienced team at this point. And I know LAFC has been in the playoffs a couple times, but if you look at what Philly has done and, and where they've been in the playoffs and sort of how they've been moving themselves along over the last three or four years, they have been in the hunt and in the fight, and they have been there. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them as the more experienced team. Although if you watch that New York City game, craziest game I've ever... I was watching that game. And I'm like, okay, New York City scored, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like, oh, one nothing. Okay, cool. Go up, give the kid a bath, right? I'm, I'm like, take him to bed. It's only like 20 minutes tops. I come back down, and the, it was one nothing when I left. I come back, and it's three to one Philadelphia, and I'm like, yeah. that is why they're so dominant. Is yeah. they may not be able to hold possession as well as LAFC is going to be, but when they start getting dangerous, you can't stop them, and they're just going to keep coming in waves yeah. and waves and waves. I'm really. I actually think now from a neutral perspective, I think it's going to be a really good MLS cup. Uh, I agree. I, I really do. So, uh, you know, I know people are going to watch it. I know that there are a lot of galaxy fans who are going to be, uh, Philadelphia, uh, we're, union fans. We're, we're all in. We're Phillies union. We do, you know, we do, hate, do. Hate, hate Houston, hate, hate LAFC. So <laughs> we're putting a lot of hope to the city of brotherly love there. So dupe all day. And to that point, I'm going to yes. mention this dupe is like a perfect, like, when juxtaposition to LAFC and like what's an MLS thing like th that I believe it was Peter Nowak who brought that in from uh, Brosha Motion Gladbeck and one of the best names to say, but right. he brought that in and kind of brought it into the team, wanted it as a goal celebration song. The fans got super behind it, became like an inside joke, became a thing and it organically became like this beautiful thing to support your club as opposed to, Hey, let's go to Germany. I hear they do this. Let's make bring these chants back. And this manufactured. Hey, we want to do a song. Let's call a, a rapper to do our song. Let's get you know someone from Cypress Hill. That it, it's just it's very manufactured as opposed to some organic thing building up. And, and I just think that's a perfect like one to one comparison of building something that's MLS American soccer. Like not hating MLS, right. enjoying MLS for its quirks and its warts. And going all in as opposed to the Euro snobbiness, you know, football club kind of mentality where, right. you know, so I think that that's that's another one of those. And again, I'm sounding like a hater here because I am a hater. Yeah, yeah I like Galaxy podcast. Uh, yeah. what, what do you want? But I think that is one of those things that I, I why I'm behind Philly as well. I just I, I want to see uh, that fan base and what they what Jim Curtin's built in that roster. Like you said, they've been one step away. They're exercising those demons. So. Where you know, we're, I think that's probably going to wrap up our MLS. Yeah, I'm our <laughs> MLS top top. But, yeah. but but that's you know, I, I, I have will, more than just disliking LAFC to root for Philly and what they've built there. I will say this: um, that uh, the Galaxy, as an organization, seem to be behind Philadelphia as well. Philadelphia out training at the uh, Dignity Hill Sports Park Track and Field Stadium um, today, I believe, and, and ahead of everything. So they've been training at Dignity Hill Sports Park. By the way, if you're the LA Galaxy, how come you don't like just give them like full run of the full stadium? You guys want to practice on the full stadium? Just come on in. We'll, 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 you guys want to go beat LAFC? Go for it. You know, that type of thing. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a rising tide lifts all boats here. Uh, and a, the anti LAFC there, it is funny. There's then this happens every single year. And I imagine this is what has happened in every single year. The LA Galaxy have been in the MLS Cup or anything else is that they always there's there's clearly a public sentiment that is going yeah. towards Philadelphia. It's not even close. It is the public sentiment is they want Philadelphia to win. Right. And they're like, Philadelphia is likable. And then the other team is not likable. Right. And I imagine that the LA Galaxy, every time they've been in there, have been on the unlikable side of of those as well. Yeah, so, I, you 100%. know, hey, yeah, it's you know, it is what it is. It's, it's fine. Uh, I wanted to get to something. This is the most important thing that I wanted to talk about. Kevin Baxter had a talk with uh, Chris Klein and uh, Greg Vanny. Uh, he put an article out. It's in the L.A. Times. I'm going to be happy to uh, to read you most of this article so you don't have to have an L.A. Times subscription. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, we're just going to rip the paywall, it. But here we are. Yeah, PDF yeah, all the yeah, way through. Yeah, we're just going to we're just going to rock and roll <laughs> through it. Um, and I think there's some important things. One is. Uh, that the galaxy, and especially if you look at Chris Klein, um, talk about you know the the progress that was made was was great, and you know obviously winning MLS cups, and I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this stuff, but obviously uh, winning MLS cups is always the measure of the team. But you know the whole idea was building something that was sustainable um, and something that goes from year to year and is able to be productive and successful year to year. Now, um, you know in this 
uh, Klein said, uh, the progress that we've made as a club and the possibility that we can continue to, continue to evolve and continue to get better, I'm greatly encouraged by that. Some of the players that we were able to bring in was evidence of this process. And I'm like, no, it's not. You got some really good players, and I don't know that it's part of the process that you got Ricky Pouge or that you got Gaston Brugman. I certainly think that, Greg, if we're talking about anything, and Kevin and I talked a little bit about this, um, Kevin has to do an event on Monday night and then he's off to the world cup. So it's unlikely he's going to be here for a little while for us to talk to, um, uh, during this time. But, um, he talked about this. He said, he said, and, and Kevin was talking to me. He says, for my money, Greg Vanny is the general manager. And he goes, he goes after talking to everybody and understanding this, he, Greg Vanny is the driving force behind all this. So, um, if you want to know where fault lies with most of the decisions that are being made, it's going to be Greg Vanny. Right. And it feels like Chris Klein has done his arm length. Uh, keep me away. Right. And, uh, you know, and we've seen that before. But um, that's, yeah, that Go just ahead. seems so, so convenient uh, because, you know, if if you're Chris Klein and you you're you're basically giving Vanny the rope and saying, you know, when when you talk to, you know, Kevin Baxter and you give you're speaking to the media, you know, comes off, gives the aura that Greg Vanny's the guy in charge. He's the one making the calls. So when if. When if things go wrong, you know, hey, it's, it's not Chris Klein's fault. He, he's he's booking the Rose Bowl. You know, he he's you know signing the players that the coach wants. Yeah. It's even I'm more just that. doing my job. Let me give uh, you let me give you more yeah. from that. Just on that exactly yeah. things. Chris Klein told Kevin he said that the LA Galaxy set records for ticket revenue and sponsorships during this last season. That's true. The, so the if you sponsorship, yeah, right, right. So if you were looking at successes that Chris Klein can check next to his name, then you have to look at records for ticket revenue and records for the shirt sponsorship. Those are things the president of the com- of, of the club are supposed to do, right? Yep. And so we're sitting there. Now, you and I have been talking about this, and Kevin points it out that there is no resolution to Chris Klein's contract as of right now. Chris Klein continues to say that him and Dan Beckerman are on the same page. I don't know what that page is, but I'll tell you right now. There goes <laughs> if, it goes one of two. It go, well, I guess if it they weren't on the same ways. page, he wouldn't be worried about a, a right. job next year. Right, right. So I, I mean, clearly, it looks like he's coming back next year. You and I were talking and said, okay, Chris Klein and and Mr. Provino, Matt earlier said it's two thousand eight hundred eighty seven days. I say it's two thousand eight hundred eighty eight days uh, since the LA Galaxy last won an MLS Cup, and for the large majority of that, I think Klein came in in twenty thirteen. Uh, maybe 2014 was whenever he first started and they got a cup, but Klein started the LA Galaxy haven't been back to an MLS cup. So if you're judging the LA Galaxy by winning MLS cups in 2888 days, they have not won one. Then that is a direct reflection on Chris Klein and what he has been able to do. Right. Um, you can put that down to the other guy who's been in there as well with Jovan Karofsky. What is your what do you think, you know, and, and this is a Chris Klein question. What do you think? people are going to remember about your tenure. If we stopped it right now, what are people going to remember about your tenure? It's the 20. Yeah. Yeah. It's 2017. It's 2020. Yeah. That's yeah. what people are going to remember. Uh, you know, the two of the worst seasons in galaxy history were under your tenure. Uh, I think that's what people are going to remember. So the part of where the discussion, I think what's where you're going with it and not to step on it is that we are probably going to see Chris Klein and this role next year because of the successes that he's had. But Going back to, you know, why his contract is up five years ago, there was a five year extension in 2017 after the worst season in Galaxy history. He got five years. I think if news comes out or it becomes apparent that they give him another five years or another long term extension, that is a middle finger to the fan base. And so Klein out right or wrong, whether you agree with the movement or not the performance on the field hasn't lived up to fan expectations. Right. So maybe it hasn't been as low as uh, maybe some people make it out to be, but at the same time, giving him that extension is com- being completely tone deaf to what this galaxy te- team has been during the entirety of his tenure. So I think, okay, we'll give you another year because there have been successes, but we can't give you multiple years because you haven't shown that the, you're a long. This is going to be a long-term success. Maybe maybe this is the one blip. This is the the one part of the the data that's skewing that we have to throw out because it's it's not consistent with what we've seen over the past five years. It, and so it, that that's the thing you need to take into consideration as well. Well, on you and I were talking. If Klein gets more than a year extension, or maybe maybe two years is is max. Right now, this isn't a five-year deal. Right, he's gotten five-year deals, and and those have sort of strung together in order to get him where he's at now. If he gets a one-year or two-year deal. 
if it's anything outside of that, and even two years to me is stretching because you don't know. Listen, we've seen this before, right? The LA Galaxy in 2019 went to the MLS Cup playoffs, right? They won a game. Then they lost to LAFC. Yeah, how surprising. Tell me how 2020 went. Now, obviously, 2020, world world changed. But, but at the but same other, time, there were plenty of teams who were able teams? to adapt. Exactly. There you go. That, that's exactly the point I was making. And, and here's... It's going to sound like I'm arguing for Klein, but I will say this, that the LA Galaxy not succeeding is not from lack of the front office providing the resources and the opportunities. Providing the the money, providing the money. Resources to me is too broad because that means that like they have a scouting department. That's true. That's true. That's true. But, but like, you know, let's sign a, 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 a a goal scorer, you know, a high press, like there are teams who would kill to sign a, a, high, a high profile striker like Chicharito and the galaxy has no problem doing that. There are teams that would, you know, have trouble bringing in. We we've gone in on Douglas Costa, but there are teams that would have, you know, just don't want to make that. Maybe they wanted to make that move, but they're not able to make that move. But the galaxy is willing to make that move. And so right. I think they're willing to put themselves out there and Hey, let's get a team together. Let's make it work. The moves have been misses. There've been a lot of swings and misses. Um, and I think we need to be fair as well and to say that um, Dennis DeCosa, who was part of that, there were some misses under his era as yep. well. So it's not all. There always are. Yeah, but that's the thing. And same with Vanny. Look at Kevin Cabral this season, mm-hmm. you know, who has, has those ties to Vanny. But then you look at Bregman, who's a sex. There's 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 swings and misses in both directions. So you can't hang it all on, on Chris Klein. But when you look at the entirety of his tenure, there there's. There's more misses than, than hits. And, and that's sort of the whole thing. So anyway, so that's sort of the Chris Klein. I fully expect him to be back, be back at least for next year. That's what I'm I'm telling you. If you're telling if it you want the tea way. leaves, if you want the tea leaves that I'm reading and how this this plays out, it, again, that that's where it is. Um now maybe Klein says that he doesn't want to come back for just a year. Maybe he's maybe that's an insult and he doesn't want to do it and maybe he wants to go do something else. Don't know. The Zlatan deal where the, didn't they give him an offer that was basically a slap in the face? Yep, absolutely. Um, well, I don't know if it was a slap in the face. They didn't want him to come back, right? <laughs> yeah. That was that was never going to happen. Um, so anyway, so that that was on there. Um, I'm trying to think. Duh, 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 duh. Uh, Klein said our goal every year is the MLS Cup. Uh, but we want to build something good and sustainable, and I have great belief that that is exactly what Vanny is doing. Uh, Kevin goes on to say, eight of the 11 starters in the playoff loss to LAFC will be back, including Captain Javier Chicharito Hernandez, the team's leading scorer each of the last two seasons, designated players Douglas Costa and Kevin McGraw, and the midfield of Pooj, Gaston Brugman, and Mark Delgado. We'll get to that. Everybody take a deep breath and just <laughs> chill for a second, okay? I my, it, my mustache flared up a little bit. My and and everybody needs to chill. I know what Kevin's saying, so I can help you out on this. <laughs> I can translate what he just said. Uh, in addition, the team is expected to exercise contract ex- options on goalkeeper Jonathan Bond and center backs Sega Koulibaly and Martin uh, Caceres uh, before the November 14th deadline. Um, although Caceres, 35, who will play in the fourth World Cup for Uruguay this uh, Uruguay this month, uh, could choose retirement as well. And we knew that, right? And he has an option out there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Klein said that when Vanny was hired before the 2021 season, he laid out an ambitious multi-year plan to rebuild not just the first team, but the Galaxy's entire soccer operation, including the scouting, the player development system, um, and maybe the midseason acquisition of Puj, which I don't think is a scouting it's not like you sit there. If you've listened to Greg Vanny tell the story, it's not like, well, we've really been scouting this Ricky Poosh. No, it was like, <laughs> hey, do we have enough huevos to go out there and try yeah. to get Ricky Poosh? And they did, which is great. And again, I think that that is a Jovan Karofsky move, and only maybe Jovan Karofsky can sort of make that move. There are probably a couple other guys around the league who can do it, but Jovan is skilled at that. And I think, the, Well, you need to have the right connections in place, and that, that is the name of the game, and he has that. So credit I, to I, him. I keep saying, and I keep, I want to make it clear: you have to give people credit for their positives, and, and you can and you can ding them for their negatives. I'm fine with that. Just be and, balanced about it. And we'll say this: there's it's in the chat a lot, also with the news of Messi going to Miami or Ronaldo to LA. Who's the guy that you're going to need on that case if you want that to happen? You're, you're going to need a guy like Jovan, who probably has those relationships yeah. uh, existing. By the way, super chat uh, came in from. I'm going to go all the way up to it. Uh, Chris, uh, $2, says Messi to Miami, Ronaldo to the Galaxy. The, the whole Miami thing is, is 
I mean, first of all, it's been rumored for a while. Basically, the the article there says that Miami is confident in their ability to bid for Leo Messi and and possibly to bring him in. It's not that they're they think he's he's absolutely coming because it sounds like he's wanted by a whole bunch of people. Not surprising. Yeah. So I if he wants Barcelona to come, Barcelona is also a strong rumor that he'll end up yeah, back there. Absolutely, yeah. it, and and that makes some sense. Um, what the by the way gave us a two dollar super chat says Hammer. Tell us how you really feel. That was when you were all getting all all up in your your <laughs> fills. Was, when you you're going being a hater. You, I was being a hater, hater, and I see I see some people in the chat. I don't know if they're LAFC fans. They, oh or, yeah, or, that was uh, definitely an LAFC I was like, fan. You know, uh, you know, appreciate the views. Maybe drop us a super chat. We appreciate you being here. Thanks yeah. for checking us out. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe you're. Uh, Teams podcasts are not at the level here, but yeah, just well, throwing I mean, that out there. In terms of propaganda, this certainly isn't. I mean, <laughs> you know, this one, uh, I, I, I like to say, listen, I think we're fair. It doesn't mean we're always out here spouting yeah, hatred not, on everything. I'm just, but you know, I, hey. I, I said full disclosure, I'm a hater, and I, I'm absolutely going to be a hater, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything else from the other side as well. So anyway, so uh, twenty dollars super chat by the way from Scott. Uh, my pocketbook weighing less because of all the rate increases for our season tickets. Klein out. Thanks for everything, Josh and Hammer. You're welcome. Um, I'm sorry about Appreciate your pocketbook, that, but you know what? Say, Listen, spending it at the right place. Scott, in the super chat here, right? Scott, your wallet isn't any lighter because you're not carrying cash around. Who carries cash around anymore? All right, it's just plastic <laughs> cards. So your wallet always weighs the same anymore. All right, this is. I've been having the nobody carries cash argument with people a little bit older than me, although. Like, what was it? I, I was watching a TikTok and they're like, for all you older people on Twi on TikTok, you know, the people born in the early 90s. And I'm like, oh, my <laughs> God, those are the older people on TikTok. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, uh, we're in bad shape. This, that's not good for me. Um, so let's go back and let me let me translate a little bit of what Kevin said whenever he said eight of 11 players are back. And he mentions the three designated players, Javier Chicharito, uh, Hernandez, Douglas Costa and Kevin Cabral. They're under contract. It does not mean that they will absolutely 100% return in 2023, okay? And I think that's the most important thing to sort of look at. Now, some of these other ones, I can tell you, they're absolutely coming back. Like, uh, Pooj is coming back, right? Chicharito is coming back. We know that for sure, right? I mean, these are things that we say. And I say know that for sure. Could the LA Galaxy trade Chicharito and transfer him somewhere to, to open up that spot to do something else with it? They could. Are they going to? I think it's highly unlikely. And I also would be shocked if Chicharito does not have a clause in his contract where he has the say. He, he very he well wants to go or stay. Yeah. And it seems like he wants to stay uh, in Los Angeles. So I think Chicharito is, is not going anywhere. The other, you, you seem to have a pretty strong conviction that Cabral is going to be the one who is not starting on this team <sighs> next th th season. This is, this is what, well, first of all, he wasn't starting down the road anyway because well, he was a <laughs> sub, right? Playing, playing on, this, okay. uh, on this roster. Because my, my feelings are. I, I would love that, but at the same time, you have to have someone who wants him or someone to take him, and mm -hmm. I, I don't see a lot of you could, you suitors could, for him as well. But you could put him like back in League 2. Somebody would take him, right? And I'm not saying that they're even going to yeah. pay all of his salary, but I bet you could get him to pay most of his salary. And for the most part, when you transfer somebody out, it kind of goes off the books, even if you're paying them, because yeah. we've seen that with people Gonzalez. We saw it with Jorgen Shelvick, right? We've seen that, that it doesn't necessarily uh, affect the salary cap. Plus, as a designated player, his salary is outside of the salary cap, although there, there must be some accommodation if yeah. you transfer somebody out and do something. I'm sure there's an MLS rule in there somewhere. Um, the whole you know there's a rule. There, there's always a rule for everything. Um, but that, I mean, my whole thing is this, and I've said this from the very beginning, and I know people sometimes don't believe me, is that Greg Vanny sees everything and more than you see whenever you see the play. Greg Vanny knows that Kevin Cabral is not the answer for next season at the wing. Greg Vanny knows that he's going to have to find an impactful winger, at least one, possibly two. With, with Douglas Costa, right? But you're going to need something. You need an impactful winger in order to do that. And you probably need one at a fairly high level. Now, the Galaxy with Kevin Cabral have a young designated player issue there, right? That they're going to have to manage. They have to manage somebody like Efrain Alvarez, who's making 600000 But somebody, I forget, in one of our other videos, somebody left a, uh, a, a note below it. And they're like... Efrain Alvarez makes six hundred thousand dollars. Like chill, because he does not cost that against the cap. I think he costs one fifty against the cap. So like, I don't care how other people spend their money. Whenever it's like in that, it's like oh, well, it's more about cap space and what that affords you and how that able to do. So in my mind, I think there's more opportunity because Kevin Cabral is young, because he played in League Two before, and he could probably go back there um, fairly easily. I feel like there's more opportunity to move him than somebody like Douglas Costa, whose almost contract is almost up. Uh, he's got one year left on that. And so yeah. to me, there's, like there's some flexibility. He seems like a buyout guy. He seems like he'd be easier to get rid of than, than Cabral because you could, you give him the Giovanni dos Santos, you, you buy it out and you're done. 
and then you bring you bring in Ronaldo for however much you're willing to pay for him there. Yeah, we're done. I, we're I mean, good. I mean that is you know, and that's certainly a rumor that's there. Um, here's the other thing. So, so while Kevin says that they're going to be back, understand they're under contract, and that's why he also talks about the contract options. Jonathan Bond, um, Sega Coolabala. Sega is going to be one that you want to lock up. And I know there's people who are like, oh, well, you, he could be a backup. Just be quiet. Stop with this crap about and Sega being a backup. Saying, Sega's, who, Sega's. Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're going to be his, his his new agents to to work this out. He gets bad press, you know. I, I don't I'm, I don't see the the flaw. I thought Derek Williams, who was someone who I was high on, had some mistakes and some some slip ups where he, I saw him. We saw him lose his starting job, and it's like I saw more mistakes with Derek Williams than I saw with Sega. And Sega was someone who the previous season maybe that's what it was. The previous season he saw mistakes like who is this guy we brought in? We thought he was going to be solid, and he's not it. This season, he was he was absolutely solid. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I absolutely want to lock him down. Yeah. What do you what do you want to bet that Kevin Cabral isn't protected in the expansion draft? By the way, you just, <laughs> in St. Louis. Like St. I Louis. said, who's gonna want him? Yeah. St. Louis, come get him. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that type of thing. By the way, this is funny, and this is, and I love this because we've. Uh, if there's one thing that we have absolutely beaten to death on this show, uh, Pottermas says, if Fanny knew about Kevin Cabral and how he plays and he sees everything that we see, then why did he keep playing? Because most of you watch Kevin Cabral with your eyes closed because you know he sucks and that's all you do. You don't see the other things that he does. I'm not saying it makes up for any of his salary, but I understand why you put him in games and why you play him in games. And I've explained that ad nauseum. Go back to almost any podcast I have done over the last year and I've explained exactly what he does and I'm correct in that assessment of what Kevin Cabral does. Now, does that mean that you want him starting on your team or even coming off the bench next year? No, not unless, I mean, and there's always this, how do you say this without like just getting just, just shattered on here? Cause I, I mean, I don't mind if people don't like my, my opinions. There is going to be this ability and, and certainly I think I would almost fall into it. That is, maybe you give Kevin Cabral one more year. And I don't love that idea. I listen, I know I don't even like it whenever it comes yeah. out of my mouth. Well, but but the again, the most frustrating player I've ever watched in my entire life because he gets in all the right positions and then can't which, finish. It makes you feel like the Chicharito twenty to twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty one. If he can get in the off season, go see a, a witch doctor have the hex <laughs> put off of him, you know, you know, sacrifice the chicken, do whatever we gotta do, get our night. Our uh, our friend who's on uh, on Twitter to do all the right sacrifices, I can see that argument of okay he comes back because the the pieces are there, but there are just so that. so many mistakes. I can't. It, yeah. it's it's so hard. It's I just I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, There's, that's not choice A. That's if you try shopping around, no one wants them. You leave them in the expansion expansion draft. You know, you take them to Disneyland, and then you you know leave the structure and hope he gets lost in there and doesn't find his way back. You yeah, know, whatever it is, if that doesn't work, then you you know the, option you know Q, then there, you you give him another year. There is there is such a there. It's crazy how, why I would even think of that. Like, and it's weird that you would, but I, there's something about him that you're like, man, but just it's, like we're beating a dead horse. We say this all the time. No one else had had breakaways in these games. Every time, but, every time he, he comes, comes on, on the field, and, he gets breakaways. Yeah. Every time. And every time he does not finish them, and yeah. every I and I want I want to be a supporter of his. I think that's it. I like Kevin. Well, as, we as waiting, like a person, yeah. We were waiting for it for the Nashville game for the LAFC. The, <sighs> the it's, LA it's Galaxy so fan base would have absolutely lost their minds and blown their lids if if Kevin Cabral contributed in one of those playoff games because we were we were waiting for it. We're like, this guy has been awful, and then now. You know, he's he's now is his moment. This is the one time you're going to play well. The one time you're going to put it in the back of the net. The, we would he would have been beloved that is someone who was you know Portuguese and supported the Euro Cup uh, right. 2016 run. Eder right. is a player who played for Portugal, got very few minutes, but he scored the you know extra time Euro Cup winning goal, and he right. will forever be a legend. Is right. he Portugal's greatest player? No. Right. Did he have a great career with Portugal? No. But he is cemented in history for that one moment. And I was hoping for that moment for Kevin Cabral where, you know, he maligned all season long, but that just that one moment that we could hang our hat on. Right. And, and he just, he never delivered it. Uh, by the way, what this uh, gave us a $5 super chat says, if you thought the Cabral blues were bad before, imagine at the first home game, if he's still here. I, yeah, I mean, I agree that to that part of it too. 
Um, it, it, yeah, it's just, it, again, I don't even believe that, but there is part of me at the back of my skull that is saying, maybe if you, you know, and it, that's, that's ridiculous and, and nobody, wants, nobody you needs need, to do it. Yeah. You uh, need the angel on your shoulder. Vanny says, I'm pleased where we are in terms of our core and how we've continued to build and move forward. Uh, the excitement of the off season is trying to find these little pieces where you can maybe improve. I like to have a lot of continuity, but there's always going to be some change from season to season. Um, Kevin Baxter went on to write, basically he said, although one player Vanny doesn't see joining the team, for 2023 uh, is Luis Suarez, a two-time European scoring leader now. And Vanny basically said, uh, we're very happy with our forwards, so it's not a position of what I would call a need, he says. Now, people read forwards, and they lost their minds. I, again, let me, let me translate. Forwards equal Javier Chicharito Hernandez, right? And Dayon Jovalic. Those are the forwards that Vanny is talking about in terms of being happy with, all right? Now, do I know that for sure? No. Am I, am I giving you my best translation? Because again, he knows what we all know and more. Um, and I'm not one of these people who's going to sit there and say coaches always get it right. He doesn't. And we pointed out Kevin Cabral where he absolutely got it wrong. Right. Um, but in this particular case, for me, he's talking about forwards with which is Jovalich and Chicharito. And, I, you know, however, that the guys who he is definitely looking at, I would imagine, are on the wings. The Douglas Costas, the Sam Grant Sears. Right. I mean. Sam had a better closeout to the season, but at times he was as bad or or sometimes even worse than Kevin I, Cabral. I'm with you, but what he had was those redeeming moments, and he that's did. where Grand Sir had the edge because, Grand Sir, I'm with you. There were shots that and dribbles out of bounds where I said, you guys are giving Kevin Cabral a hard time, and Grand Sir gets a pass because – you know, he looks like he's expending more effort and maybe it's his, his body type and his build that just makes it look like he's, you know, trying harder. But he had some moments that just made you say, woof. Yeah. But he also had the moments where he put it in the back of the net and he made things happen and yep. he was a spark. And, yep. he, and that's the difference. That, that's did. what you need. doesn't take much. You he know, over the course out. of the season, you can't say Samuel Granser was an MVP caliber player for this LA Galaxy team, but he had his moments. And that's all we ask. We just want, we just want our moments. And Cabral had zero moments it's really really unfortunate and sad yeah uh the discord shared this uh and and it was a, it was a great stat the la galaxy had 15 goal scorers this season 15 M among the leaders in all major league soccer yeah, in terms of been, the distribution yeah. you, across you tell us that before the season we'd be thrilled yeah exactly you're like wow remember everywhere where are all the goals gonna come from well they came from 15 different players now a lot of those are ones Right. I mean, Kevin yes. Cabral is on that list. He scored against Atlanta. I know people would like to for, for, uh, forget that that, that happened. But it uh, that was a it, funny goal. Uh, that in the open cup goal. Right. Just right. Yeah. Calamity uh, of errors. The final thing Kevin had in here that is worth repeating is that Klein said no to a rebrand. No, no to a rebrand. Uh, we're proud of our club, proud of our brand, Klein said. Our Galaxy brand is as good as it's ever been. And you'll see the same one come February. So at least in 2023, there's no rebrand. <laughs> Which, I think, uh, well, to his credit, or, and I don't know if this is Klein's credit or whatever brain trust is in charge, I think the feelers went out for a rebrand, mm -hmm. and I think the majority of the feedback that they got is that a rebrand was not wanted from the fan base or, or needed. So I right. think had the fan base been clamoring, hey, we need a new crest, we need new colors, we need a, a, a rebrand, is, had there been like these rumblings, I don't think Klein is so proud of this LA Galaxy brand that he's built that he wouldn't have gone a different direction if he didn't see dollar signs and potential in, in doing so. But I think he saw feedback that people would not be happy with it. And I think that's part of why they're staying put. And I, I do agree with the statement that the Galaxy has built this brand and their current setup now. And I think changing it right now would be a mistake. Yeah, it, it certainly seems to uh, to be going that way. Um all the Reds uh, on our roster, we have highlighted, I think, this before, but the guys who technically have contracts are up. We know that Javier Hernandez is coming back, but his contract is up. Uh, Derek Williams' contract is up. Jonathan Bond' contract is up. There are options on all of these guys. Uh, Victor Vasquez' contract is up. Uh, Caceres' contract is up. Uh, I can tell you, Clushin, Sanchez, Zavaleta, Aguirre, and Judd, uh, at least from what we can tell, all their contracts are up. Doesn't mean the club doesn't have an option and they can exercise that option. Let me... To help you out, though, I think Jonathan Bond is 100% coming back, and I think that that's probably already a done deal. Um, remember that you don't necessarily have to exercise an option. You can sign a new contract whenever this comes about, too, right? So you're like, you're like, oh, well, our option was for $3 million, but we only want to pay you $900,000. So, you know, we, we're not we going to exercise that option. We say that every year, but very rarely does a player come. Usually when it's 
not exercise, they usually walk away. Very few exceptions. I know of one already. Yeah, I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so anyway, so so I mean, those are things that can sort of happen too. So just keep those in mind. You know, like Sasha Kleshin probably, uh, I, I'm guessing, isn't going to have you know a real good uh, like uh, negotiation going on. He made like yeah. league minimum for a senior player. <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's yeah. anything else to go. Uh, if he comes would back, you like he's... To, yeah. Would you like to pay us to play for the LA Galaxy? Yeah, I think that's that's the the next move. Yeah, so but, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go that's you talk. A, you talk for a is second. Is that what that signal means? It's been a little while. <laughs> yeah, it's a, but going back to Jonathan Bond coming back, we were just kind of saying, did he deserve to win Defender of the Year? Um, and so maybe we would have been okay with looking for another goalkeeper. But I think that's unfair. I think you know, from what he's brought to this team and been a solid part of the defense, I think he, you know, offering him an extension or offering him a new. A new negotiate a contract, whatever it is, I think that's worth bringing him back. That way you keep that consistency, especially in the defensive line, which has been a galaxy struggle of past seasons. When you bring back that goalkeeper, who's that voice in the back and helps set, set up your defense and is a huge part of it, changing that could, could cause a lot of a lot of turmoil. So I think keeping that and as well as bringing Koulibaly back, uh, Caceres, depending on how that plays out, right. I think that that's a nice little spine to build up from the back. But but you notice he didn't mention Derek Williams in that, right? So I mean, it, maybe that chip is sailed. Yeah, 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 read between the lines on that one, right? I mean, there's some other ones. Obviously, you're not going to ask about every player, and usually you have to ask directly about players in order to get answers on those. So yeah, that's usually how it works whenever I do it. Um, one of the so that's sort of where we sit on on this this league building. Um, and apparently all those uh, that information has to be in by uh, the 14th of November. So, again, uh, MLS Cup is going to come this weekend and then you're going to start seeing things happen over the next week and, and decisions and roster decisions. Everything sort of start going to that. And then there's a free agency period that opens up. There's like a one day trade window. There's all this other stuff that is sort of going to go go on that we'll uh, talk about whenever it comes up. Uh, one of the things, there's a couple things. Let's quickly close on some of these things, and then I want to talk a little bit about state of the league before we close everything completely down. Um, there is going to be, if you're uh, if you're around and sort of not doing anything, there is going to be a a game USA versus Colombia uh, that is January 28th uh, at Dignity Health Sports Park, 4:30 uh, p.m. Pacific time. Camp Cupcake is back. Uh, this will be after the World Cup, uh, so you'll have Camp Cupcake Cupcake uh, back there and and rocking and rolling. Uh, which, if you haven't been to those, I mean, that's like the least pressure, you know, and, and the, the worst international game. It's bad. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's so bad. Right. I, know, I don't know if the Galaxy PR department is, is listening to this episode and having me. It's going to these games can be borderline depressing. So unless you're like a super USA fan or if you're Serbian, which that was the funny thing to me is yeah, the Galaxy almost. with a Serbian player. Yeah, are playing ha, or have that game was at Bank of California and right. LAFC with all their Colombian players. They're yeah. playing at Dignity Health Sports. They, they Park, couldn't. So. Have, they yeah, couldn't, yeah, have they couldn't have swap that. You know, no. to try to get your local fan base. But you know, hey, it's a chance to see your national team. Uh, but I think mostly if you're from the visiting countries, that's more. Uh, that's probably more of a draw for those fans yeah. of those teams or people from those cultures. To your point, or Don Garber's point of every city being a soccer city. Again, uh, you're going to find. Plenty of Serbians, plenty of Colombians in Southern California to attend yeah. those games. So attendance, I don't think, will be the issue. Uh, one of the other things that happened, Raheem Edwards was called into the uh, Canadian camp. Now, they have a pre-camp that is going to happen uh, before they head off to the World Cup. This is in, uh, They're playing against Bahrain, uh, and they have a, uh, a camp, I think, in uh, in Qatar and in the UAE, and they're going to be playing some some little things. So Raheem Edwards is off that. I'm sure there's some LA, other LA Galaxy. Caceres is off with, with Uruguay. We know that, and there's a, there's a chance that... Uh, you know, he's going to be playing in a, in a World Cup. So you have some of these guys who are going to get a chance to possibly play in a World Cup. Uh, Don Garber said today that possibly as many as 40 MLS players will be playing in the World Cup. So there'll be plenty of MLS action across the entire World Cup as you're getting ready to go. Uh, just in case you forget all the groups that are going on, uh, the U.S. in Group B, you have uh, Canada in Group F with Belgium and Morocco and Croatia, the Galaxy, or the, the Galaxy USA with uh, England, <laughs> Iran, and, and Wales. Yeah, it was. I was trying to... I, it used to be where I would watch U.S. games to watch the L.A. Galaxy players, but there are none. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't get to do that as much, so I don't get to do oh. uh, anything. Uh, and I was going to say, and hopefully you won't be rooting for 
for the, the Galaxy players who are at the World Cup because they're in Portugal's group. Yeah. I can't have you rooting for Uruguay against Portugal. That's not fair. I, I, so. I, I will. I will. I will absolutely do that, <laughs> and, and then I'll tweet it about it uh, at you. Uh, some of the stuff, real quick, that happened in the state of the league, and Don Garber was in front of everybody because it usually happens right before MLS Cup. Um, I listened to uh, the replay of it, so I have some some understanding of some of what he said, uh, but I'm going to use uh, Jonathan Tannenwald at the goalkeeper, if you don't follow him. I'm going to use his tweets as sort of my cliff notes here, so that way I can quickly get through a bunch of the topics. One is plan for expansion news in the first half of 2023. There is a pretty good idea that the next team announced is Las Vegas. That does not mean it's locked in, and San Diego could also be in those talks. San Diego or Las Vegas are likely to be the 30th team. One of those is. And I believe the same ownership group is involved in one of those bids, so I don't think, um, from what I was hearing, is that Vegas and San Diego both are not a possibility. It's one or the other because right now group right now there like is it might be both. Yeah, it, it's going right now. They're going to announce one, but the chance yeah. for thirty one and thirty two San Diego. If it's San Diego's not announced because we sort of expect that it's going to yeah. be Las Vegas. If San Diego is not announced, um, then expect San Diego to be thirty one or thirty two because that seems likely to happen now as yeah. well. And with Snapdragon Stadium, that is a perfect stadium and, for for an MLS team to play. Yeah, in. W- with what the loyal has been doing with what the wave has been doing. Yep. They've kind of built the infrastructure there to have a case. I've seen it pop up in the chat as well as Sacramento. They really got a raw end of the stick. And Still, when you think yeah. when you talk about St. Louis and like your small to mid market teams, Sacramento would have gotten behind a team. You yeah. see like the, the Kings basketball Kings are such an awful franchise franchise right they show up for them and they go hard for the kings and so like have they had a soccer team there's no doubt in my mind that they would sacramento would have been a great spot for another uh mls team a california team a rivalry team you can build up a rivalry there with san jose it would have been great but i I just think that ship has sailed they lost lost so much momentum there it, it sailed to a certain point here's the thing is if they get an ownership group that can come in there and they have the money i think sacramento could easily be back in the in the mix right away and you say another california yes another california team sacramento absolutely can support um, professional soccer team, I think, at MLS level. San Diego absolutely can support an MLS level team as well. You're going to get to eventually where there's like a California Cup being played, and yeah. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm here for that, and, I, and I'm, I'm well, excited, excited when, for when that to get, happen. When you get 50 teams, you know, you'll have the California Conference you'll yeah. play four games against one another, and then yeah, it, we'll do yeah. the, the World Cup playoff after that. Um, the, the other thing is that they were talking about linear TV because there are still linear TV deals. Don Garber says there was no hurry to sign a linear TV deal um, because really the Apple TV deal is the, is the big one that they need to get. Linear comes next. So that's linear, by the way, is your nationally televised games on ESPN or Fox or any of the other major networks. There's still going to be some of those. Just remember, they don't get exclusive rights to those anymore. They will be broadcast on Apple TV and available to go over uh, nationally. Um, and so that's, that's makes them not as valuable because you're going to have people who aren't going to watch it and they know that. So they can't put as many eyes, they can't sell as many advertising dollars, all that stuff, because they know their audience is going to be split between Apple TV and whoever the national team is. So that's why there's that. There's also, by the way, hasn't been a ton of hiring done. We know that their production facility is supposed to be in New Jersey. That's not going to be built this year. Um, and so they're going to have to build that. So much like the U S open cup fiasco that was basically being, being shot down in Florida. That's where all that stuff is going to go for the, for the short term. And Garber says, you know, Oh, we still have, you know, 114 days. He didn't, he said that we still have three months to figure this out. And he's like, so we're not in any real hurry, but the bottom line is that there should be some hurry. Um, Garber's stalling on this and it, it, it's everything I've seen so far. It sort of showed me that the people who are in charge of this don't understand the urgency to which to get all this stuff done. It, that's the part that scares me is, is this going to be an MLS production or an Apple production? Because it's an MLS if, production if and Apple distributes it. That's how that's, that's what scares me yeah. because if MLS is in charge of putting things, things together, putting teams together. I don't trust that we're going to get, uh, you know, the best, the best possible product out there. If it was someone from, you know, Apple who happened to be a soccer fan and had that, you know, the right kind of, you know, marketing brain to some of the shows that they put out there. We've seen what Apple TV even though it's not, you know, a heavy competitor within the streaming wars, but you could, it's a well polished product. And so right. that's the part that makes me nervous is the stuff that comes out of MLS sometimes. Gar- yeah. Garber builds up the Apple deal as the number one content distribution company in the world is Apple. And, and I think that they're probably correct on that, right? In terms of content, getting content out. If you look at all of the, the streaming platforms, all of the, um, all music, of the, all, the music, yeah. all the stuff that they have, 
they get content out probably more, better than anybody else in the world. Agreed with that. So I don't think that's going to be the issue. The issue is going to be production quality and everything else. I, you know, I know Baxter said it, and then a lot of people push back on it. Listen, there's going to be a lot of games that are called remotely, and I don't think you're going to love the announcers, and they're going to say the t the players' names wrong and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So get ready for that. The only thing that I love about this whole idea is that I always know where to find the game, and That's I never have to worry about ever looking for it anywhere else. That trumps all ab above everything else, not having to get a VPN, not having to worry about Spectrum. The, above anything else, you know, like one of the benefits of having ESPN Plus was, you know, you knew the MLS games were going to be on there, but even those games were blacked out, you know, over the course yep. uh, of the past few years. So knowing there's not going to be anything blacked out for the next 10 years, you are going to know you're going to have access to watch these games if you want to watch them, those games. That's that's the biggest deal of them all. That, that's going to be better than announcers and anything, anything else, because eventually at the end of the day, you just want to see your team play. And that's that's what we're going to be able to do with the Apple TV deal. Garber was also asked about uh, the playoff format and whether or not it would be scheduled again. He did make a I thought was a good point, which was every league in North America, especially here in the United States, tweaks their playoff format like on a regular basis. Look at baseball and the wild cards and different wild cards and, you know, basketball. Oh, these guys, it's the play in game and all these yeah, other things. Yeah. Everybody's always tweaking these playoff things in order to get what is the most exciting part of the year, you know, to be the most exciting part of the year and to give as many teams sort of as possible. Apple's going to want that for, for content distribution and for getting value out of it. Right. And quite honestly, teams want it as well, because that's where you get your revenue. If you're in the playoffs, extra you games, get, yeah. yeah, extra games and extra revenue and all those other things. So there's always going to be this, this demand. Now for me, I want to go back to two legs and I don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, I like MLS cup being one game, by the way, I know there's people yeah, who say a final, a, yeah. fi a final, if you're going to make it two legs, the final should be neutral ground. I think no, because see, you're giving I, over the, over the course, you're letting it build up. But it's never going to happen. That that no, neutral ground fair. thing is gone, right? Yeah. But in terms of having one game at the end, I'm usually okay with it because at that point, the best teams during that time have usually risen through the gauntlet of home and away, home and away, home and away in order but, to get there. But my, my argument would be, you know, LAFC is going to host uh, a game this weekend that they won on a tiebreaker. Right. Philadelphia is no less deserving. Right. I want to see these two teams play a neutral field, who's going to be the best team that's going to settle that to me would settle it better than a referee being swayed by the home field advantage uh, of what's going to be happening going on, which I will say MLS cup is kind of a different animal right. and you don't necessarily get your regular home crowd at that game. No. So you know. I am curious to see how, how that home crowd is going to look. Uh, compared it, to previous games. The other stuff, so so that's something that you can sort of say, yes, um, uh, by the way, Don Garber would like Lionel Messi uh, in, in the league, FYI. Um, oh, really? That's yeah, shocking. I was going to, yeah, I know. <laughs> he, he didn't say, you didn't shoo him away? Here, here was the bad part of this, and understand the, where this comes from, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but um, Don Garber is in charge of the league and is put in that position by the owners. Right. He works for the owners of the league. Don Garber is an employee of the owners. That's how this works. Um, so uh, whenever he was asked about Merritt Paulson um, and the Timbers uh, and what the Yates report had sort of put out, um, you know, he basically said, we at this time don't see any reason at all for Merritt Paulson to sell the Timbers. And basically they said, oh, well, you know, he's a, he's agreed that he made all these mistakes and he stepped away and he has a new CEO and he's not all the thing that's going to come back to be a problem. But as of right now, you have to assume that the will of the owners and apparently they need 75 percent, um, uh, of the owners in order to force a sale of a team the will of the owners isn't there. So it, you can be mad at Don Garber for what he said, but he is a reflection of the will of the owners in this particular case. And I would imagine the owners are like, no, we want to keep Merritt Paulson where he's at for right now. He hasn't gone over, which is, it's certainly not in line with public opinion on the entire fiasco that's going on up in uh, the Pacific Northwest and, and everything that came out of that. Uh, so anyway, so that's sort of uh, something. I think that's the biggest sort of takeaways that I got from it. First of all, I think the the expansion thing on San Diego and Las Vegas is, is encouraging for that. St. Louis coming in with 60,000 uh, season tickets, so that type of thing. Uh, by the way, Francisco gave us a $5 super chat, said, what are the updates on G2 taking the Orange County Stadium exclusively? It's not going to happen this year. Uh, it might not happen next year. What basically happened was everybody kicked the can down the, the road for a year. Now, the city was absolutely negotiating with the LA galaxy because the LA galaxy deal is a better deal for the city in, in a lot of ways. Um, and so, 
you know, now there's going to be probably, I would imagine, open talks between the LA Galaxy and Orange County, uh, Orange County uh, Soccer Club, right, about joint using that as a professional and how that fits into things. Now, Orange County seems to be going scorched earth on uh, on the LA Galaxy every chance that they get. So I'm not sure the LA Galaxy are going to want to play real fair. And Orange County should understand that the big dollars and, and the big money behind all that is with the LA Galaxy and not Orange County. So if they want to have a home, it might be good for them to start playing ball with the LA Galaxy because I would imagine given the, the year um, and given the relationships that I think the LA Galaxy have made down there in Irvine, uh, I would imagine that it fairly easily they could take that stadium away from Orange County SC. And just a reminder, Orange County rents there, um, and the Galaxy would be renting there, but so it's not like stealing somebody's stadium. They would just simply not be the tenants there anymore. Or provide them a better deal. That's what the the budget sheet... It feels gross it does. to go in there and say, but, you know, you know, it's a better business move, but basically you're coming in with you know, a big, a bigger sack of cash and saying that I'm going to be able, uh, you know, to outbid you as opposed to, you know, the supporting local soccer movement of kind of, you know, what, uh, Orange County soccer club is kind of about, but it just, what you described just sounds like great, uh, local politics. Hey, there's people who are upset. And if we're going to make a vote on this, you know what, we're not going to vote on this then because that way you can't vote me out uh, next, next yeah. time those local elections come in town, you, you're not going to have this chip to argue against me so Let, let's that's be just very, local politics in a nutshell that's exactly what happened here they saw upset people and they said i'm not going to upset my constituents moving on <laughs> yeah we'll just we'll just keep it as it is right yeah but the other part of this is i can guarantee you in irvine that voter base has no idea that orange county sc plays at that stadium in the large scheme of the voter base even but, if you got all the people really upset about that i'm not sure it's enough to sway any election i think the but, the local people know that I will say, as someone who's been around uh, a lot of school boards, it doesn't mean that the consensus is that is what's there. But if you have the loud people at those meetings showing up, right. that will scare off the people who are who are wouldn't, making those decisions. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, by the way, two dollar super chat from uh, Brendel uh, says, "Bring back Pavone." You know, if if he can clear, up, I'll, I'll be, let's let's throw it all on the table here real quick before we close everything out. If he can clear up his legal issues, he'll hundred percent. He could come back hundred percent right now. You could do it right now. Bring him. I, yeah, I have, that'd be I, a great, a great, a great signing. I'm right it, there with you. And if it's, you, ha- yeah, and if I you have Pavone more, on one side, Costa on one side, I mean, that's not a horrible lineup with Chicharito well, in the top position. Well, just P- Pavone with with a, a you know a traffic cone is or it makes makes you yeah. better. Pavone would be a game changer. And and the one thing I'll say, and and it's not changing our tone on this. It's just the the more time gets removed for this, I think the better it is for Pavone, just because it seems like. You know, time time just seems to be one of those things that, you know, wins out. And so it just seems like if if, and maybe that's the Argentine court system, and maybe I don't know what I'm talking about here, but it just seems like it's less of an issue now than maybe it was a couple of years ago. And that's right. not to say it's not serious, but it's just to say that, you know, people with memories and other things happen. It's like the uh, further we get away from this, the less of an issue it becomes. If it gets cleared up, that I mean, that's yeah. we've always that's said easiest, that that's, that's that's the that's, easiest solution. Yes. If it gets cleared up to everybody's satisfaction. Then he comes back and we're done and that's it. And we're done. That's <laughs> it's it. It's in Cabral. Yeah. Or yeah. buyout cost and you bring in Pavone. Yeah. Thank Give you. Give Cabral that extra year because he needs to see Pavone do that work. <laughs> wow. You're going to get us canceled. Oh, uh, what the game yeah, is. That, five... That's what's going to do it. Not my yeah. comments about Pavone right now, but no, no. it's bring, it's threatening bring, to bring Cabral, Cabral back. Cabral back. Yeah. That, that will do it. Uh, the booze <laughs> are already starting. Oh, uh, what the gave us a $5 super chat a little while ago. Josh and Hammer, you guys need to, should do a weekly show during the World Cup. Probably not. Uh, we are, I mean, listen, there is plans and we have over the course of the off seasons of your, remember we're entering season number 15 for corner of the galaxy here, um, which I'm hoping will be a big season where, I mean, I still have show 1000 coming up. All these other things are sort of, you know, sort of kicking off into season 15. We usually do weekly shows in the off season. Now, uh, sometimes are there breaks? Everyone's like, yeah, they said breaks every yeah. once in a while. Do we do two shows? Usually not two shows starting off, but eventually it always morphs back into two shows well before the season starts. And once those transfer rumors start coming in, and then there's, there's, look at us right now. There hasn't been a game in 14 days. 90 minutes. And we had 90 minutes of stuff to talk about with happenings around the league and how they connect to the LA Galaxy and how they're interwoven. So plenty to talk about. Uh, for the next uh, three months, four months, 114 days, yes. however you want to cut it up. Yes, not not saying I'm counting, but just saying I'm counting. <laughs> 
Um, that's where we sit. Uh, LA Galaxy uh, entering the offseason mode. You're going to see stuff after MLS Cup. Things will start to ratchet up a little bit. There will be a little break. There will be a lull. Everybody will take a deep breath like me. Uh, I've been enjoying my 10 days off. Uh, there will be no show on Monday. Uh, next show likely to be Thursday. Again, so a week in seven days, we will be back here ready to talk more LA Galaxy and get you going. But other than that, I think that's it. Well, oh, uh, eSuper asks for our Philly versus LAFC predictions. I'm going to go first. Um, Philadelphia will win this 300 to nothing. Is that is that wow. is that too many? And have you I'm seen how many, have you seen how many goals they score? Have you seen whenever they get rolling? Yeah, these when are, they get hot. These well, are guys was, who scored like sixteen goals in three games. All right, so that, they're they're ready to go. That's the funny thing with that NYC game. It's like mm-hmm. Philly played the most beautiful soccer for fifteen minutes, and that was enough to to win them the game. So um, the one thing that I will say, going back to our MLS bracket predictions, I absolutely crushed the Eastern Conference. I predicted every game correctly with Philadelphia going into the final. Uh, the Western Conference, not so much. I had the LA Galaxy going to the final. I had FC Dallas beating Austin. But with that being said, had the Galaxy won their game, I, I feel like they could have put away Austin, and my prediction wouldn't have been that crazy. Uh, so so that's the one thing. But I'm going to stick with my prediction that I originally had, which I had Philadelphia beating the LA Galaxy 3-1. to one. You're sticking I'm with just gonna I'm just going to flop the LA teams. Right. I'm going to say Philadelphia still wins. Which you can, one. by the way, because LA, in my opinion... The only team that was going to knock LAFC out of the Western Conference was the LA yeah. Galaxy. Because quite honestly, it's the only team that was as good or better and, than than LAFC in spurts. In in the MLS field, what was it, six no, fourteen teams that were in the MLS Cup playoffs? Right. The LA Galaxy were the only team that were going to be able to beat LAFC, and the Philadelphia Union are the only other team from yep. the other conference that could take them. So it's, it's let's only see. Chance. You're our last hope here. All right. Um, by the way, what they wanted to clarify say, and said, Josh, we should you should do it of the World Cup. We should do a World Cup weekly show, except that that would not be on theme with Corner of the Galaxy. And I'm not about to start a new podcast. Offshoot. I don't Offshoot. do that. I'm sure I'm sure we're going to be talking about the World Cup whenever this happens. It's, yeah. It is soccer Christmas. All right. We are going to be just enthralled with games coming all over. And the fire festival that is going to be Cutter. Oh, it's going to be so that, bad. It's, it's going to be so yeah. bad. Yeah. So horrible. I mean, Fox is over there just swallowing any <laughs> doubt or shred of evidence of being like impartial or anything else. And they're just like, look at the wonderful city of Qatar. And it's like, yeah, people are dying. Like bad yeah. things are happening there. And this is, FIFA's yeah. hopping on that now and saying like, hey, guys, just uh, stick to playing football. OK, just don't talk about now. the other cultures like that. Yeah. It's like, listen, normally I agree. Like you shouldn't go to Germany and be like American culture is better than Germany. You can certainly have an opinion, though, whenever people are dying and people's civil rights are being eroded before your very eyes. That's does that's that's not a cultural thing. That is basis on a human being. I know lots of people will disagree with me, but that's based but on a human being sort of. Uh, the it, difference it is also you're hosting, yeah. you're welcoming people to your country, and so I understand the argument of being respectful of other cultures. But we were talking about this, getting off to another tangent here, but. Um, if I'm a supporter of Australia or of England, maybe I didn't want to travel to Qatar, but that's where the World Cup is being played, and that's where I'm kind of forced to go. So I'm end up going there, and so it's a difference than the going there out of you know respect, as opposed to you're hosting an event, you're welcoming other people. So understanding, being respectful, of course, but at, of your hosts, but at the same time trying to be welcoming. In this is going to be one of the weirdest World Cups like, because FIFA has always been corrupt, and we're not going to clutch our pearls like oh all of oh, a yeah. sudden yeah this year is the year that fifa's corrupt they've always yeah. been corrupt but it's just it's so blatant and so obvious and so bad just the fact that it's happening in november is uh. is, is an issue already so it's just it's going to be one of the hardest ones to watch right. but to the point you know, i'm not I'm not not going to watch so you know maybe I, maybe i'm a, a bad hypocrite. person You're yeah a maybe hypocrite. i'm a hypocrite i'm a, bad I'm a person. hypocrite too I'm so it's just watch. one of those things but i think the deal with the devil that i'm making is i'm going to watch but i'm also going to you, you call it like you see it. You're fair and you say, hey, this it's not right. I'm going to watch the games. My country's in it. I have multiple you know, heritages that I'm rooting for who are competing uh, in this competition. So I'm going to watch it and I'm going to root for them. But at the same time, I could recognize uh, you know, the issues that it's going to be. And especially when you hear about you know, them paying fans to go and speak well about the World Cup experience. Mm-hmm. And you see some of the camps that they're putting up because mm-hmm. they don't have enough hotels. It's you know, apps that you need to download, they're going to have access to all your phones. So even if things it's, don't go well, it's how much of that information is going to come out? It's, 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 it sounds like a real bad time. So prayers to Kevin Baxter. Hope he has a good time over there. 
you know, I'm, I can't wait to talk to him. It, and I'm sure I'll Get be able to text phone, him. Kevin. And yeah, and the whole day, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm almost like, dude, don't, don't, we're not going to do a podcast while you're there because I don't want you saying things there. Like, I want you to come here and then we can talk. That's right. Uh, Patrick, by the way, gave us a $10 super chat, says COG wins podcast of the Galaxy Award. That's good. I'm glad we won a little award. Good job. That's our first, our first hardware of the season. Thank you. I think I'm going to do it. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Third place in the voting, so it was a that's right. Yeah. That's right. We just we just skated right through uh, all the way through uh, that it is. All right, that'll do it. We're gonna let everybody go. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, if you want to watch MLS Cup, do that. If you want to spend the time zend out in your yoga retreat, do that as well. I'm all for whatever makes you happy in these particular off season. It seems like it ended too quickly. That's where I'm I'm sort of at, um, and so I don't necessarily like it. Um, so in this particular case, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Just pretend like the season's still going on. So we'll have another show coming up next Thursday uh, whenever we rock and roll that. All right, Eric, anything else? You good? Yeah, I'm just going to say the the mustache. I did it for Halloween. I was Jim Hopper, Stranger Things uh, with my daughter. That was the reason for it. And then I'm keeping it. My wife was like, well, why are you keeping it? Uh, the reason why I'm keeping it, Movember is also a thing. Uh, right. You know, that's a case. I, I am going to have a link on my Instagram page at Galaxy Profile. That's Galaxy P-R-O-F-O-U-L. I don't need money. You guys give money with the super chat. You, you know, you're doing all that. So if you're in a situation, hold on to your money. I'm not doing this as a fundraiser, but if you're in a fortunate enough situation where you do want to donate to a cause, prostate cancer is something uh, that's near and dear to my heart as a dad who's a survivor of prostate cancer. So at the very least, you don't have to donate any money. Uh, if you're around our age, if you grew up playing Nintendo, if you've been old enough to buy beer for a couple decades now, Go to the doctor, get it checked out, make sure everything, uh, all the plumbing's in order. You know, at the very least, just make sure you're all good because yeah. uh, you never know. Don't take those things for granted. So I'll have the link if you're looking for a cause uh, to donate for Movember and prostate cancer and men's health. But uh, don't feel like you're obligated. I'm, I'm, I'm not, we don't need your money, but I just want to throw that out there. Shout out to, you know, all the prostate cancer survivors and men's health and uh, wishing the best for all of our listeners who've, who've dealt with something like that. Awesome. Tell people where they can find you. Let's go. All right. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Hammer EV. You can also find me on Instagram at Galaxy Profile. That's Galaxy P R O F O U L. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J G U E S M A N. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornergalaxy.com. That's where you can find all of these podcasts, all of our videos, all that stuff, fun stuff is right there, cornerofthegalaxy.com. We're happy to be here for your off season viewing and listening pleasure. We hope you join us next week on Thursday, live show at 8 p.m. Most. 8 p. most Thursdays, 8 p.m., most Mondays, 8 p.m. We'll get back into a normal schedule here in just a little bit. All right, for the hammer himself, Mr. Eric Beer, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening. You've been watching to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.